we talk about dry process rubber, we're talking about adding a chemically engineered crumb rubber product into a drum plant or into a batch plant uh, during the mixing process. Okay, this is not a modified asphalt binder. This is an asphalt mix modifier. The product that is being added in is called Elastico. It's a chemically engineered minus 30 chrome rubber. It's an ISO compliant product. It's a manufactured product, so there's not a great deal of variability in it. Uh, it complies with a whole range of ASTM standards. It's shipped in bulk bags, as you can see in the uh, center lower picture there. And when it arrives at the plant, it's fed into the plant using a fiber machine, which I'm sure many of you have already seen. This is an eye gives you a rough idea of just how much material has been laid down. We're approaching 6 million tons on the ground throughout the U.S. Uh, large uh, quantities of material put down in the southeast, uh, in the upper Midwest, and down towards the southwest. We've got about 1,500 miles of interstate, 6,000 miles of state highways, a lot of miles of county and municipal roads, a uh, wide range of mixed designs, a lot of states, a lot of countries, and we've got a track record that is just passing over the 20 year mark. So this is not an experimental material. This is a, uh, a process that has been used and proven in a wide range of uh, conditions. This product is very, very different. Uh, it has rubber in it. The rubber is soft and it's sticky, but the product as a whole does not stick to any, anything in the process. Uh, there are no special emissions that are created, but it produces a mix that is a lot more workable, a lot easier to handle, and compared to polymer modified asphalt, it even permits faster production. Uh, when the material goes down through the silo system into the trucks and from the trucks to the paver, uh, the uh, material moves very freely. It releases easily off the truck bed and off the equipment. And when we lay the material down and roll it, we find that we actually can use fewer roller passes to obtain a compliant compaction. The bags are shipped uh, typically on a flatbed trailer uh, to the asphalt production facility. Uh, the material is loaded into a surge hopper and the surge hopper is used to feed a loss and weight fiber machine uh, that makes sure that whatever tempo the plant is operating at, the rubber is going to be fed in at the appropriate rate. This material is very easy to unload from the bags. We just simply cut the bottom of the bag and uh, the material drops out into the surge hopper. And then as the uh, unit begins to lose weight from a rubber going into the process, the surge hopper replenishes that weight and keeps the, the uh, unit full and operational. Uh, typical setups, the, the unit will shut off uh, the plant if it runs out of material. This material is blown through the wrap collar, and as I indicated before, it moves through the plant very easily, no particular issues. And if you watch the truck bed, you can see just how easily this material moves through your equipment. Notice that we're not seeing any huge buildup of material, and after unloading the truck bed and all your other equipment, it's going to be clean. No problems with the uh, with the shuttle buggy if you're using it. No problems with the paver, even if we're paving down to temperatures as low as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We see no problems whatsoever in laying down a mat, but this material lays down very smoothly. We don't see a lot of tearing or issues on the mat, and you can get final compaction on this material down to temperatures of about 200 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a real easy process to use, and your crews will tell you straight up other than smelling a, a faint hint of, of singed rubber, it's a very, very easy material to use in their, in their paving operations. Uh, when we look at lab performance, we're seeing that uh, thin lift uh, ECR uh, is comparable to thicker lifts of uh, hot mix, and we're seeing essentially the same thing in the field. Uh, the big issue, or big, the big opportunity, I should say, is significant savings with the technology. And I'm going to give you just a couple of uh, snapshots here, and these are Oklahoma specific. But if we replace a polymer modified 5828 that is modified to a 7022 uh, and compare it to an ECR mix that is based off a of 6422 uh, with 6% crumb rubber addition, we see a savings of about $3 per mix ton, which is a substantial amount of money. Uh, generally speaking, you know, when we work in the paving industry, if you can bring a technology in that saves 50 cents, it's a big deal. Saving $3 is quite a bit bigger. But the real interesting comparison is when we take a look at thin lift. And when we look at thin lift, where we compare two inches of hot mix 
<clears throat> to one inch uh, lift of, of ECR or an inch and a half of ECR, we see that with an inch and a half compared to two inches, we're saving about $13,000 per lane mile. And if we take a full inch off the pavement thickness, we're saving $30,000 per lane mile, and that is in material costs only. So those are pretty significant numbers. They're, they're attention grabbing to say the least. And that is why this technology has been really aggressively adopted by uh, producers that uh, are in states where specifications have been issued for this technology. So we've got, uh, we've got a tool that is available for your toolbox and uh, something that we would be more than happy to discuss with you in greater detail if you're interested.